So this might be your first look into Epicor Kinetic 2021. In the data collection area, which is formerly MES, Epicor has changed the screens to have the new Kinetic look. According to Epicor, the modern user experience is one of the core aspects of Kinetic 2021.1. And it's delivered through the Kinetic user interface using the Kinetic interface results in a more productive and delightful experience for users. Today, we'll take a look at the Kinetic user interfaces and data collection slash MES. So today I plan to review each of the topics listed here quickly in the presentation and then also open these data collection items in Kinetic Epicor to view more details about each topic and possibly other Kinetic screens. We'll be discussing what is Kinetic data collection, the start activity screen, the end activity screen, job tracker, work queue, and then we'll review data collection items in Kinetic. So what is Kinetic data collection? Kinetic means related to or resulting from motion. The new interface streamlines data collection tasks for intuitive, intuitive functional task completion. To improve simplicity, tabs are combined and function, functions redesigned. This reduces redundant entries and improves navigation, increasing shop floor efficiency and worker satisfaction. This picture shows the general areas of the kinetic interface. The tree is shown on the left and can be expanded or collapsed, as can the cards, as Epicor refers to them, which is, are shown in the middle here, by clicking on the arrow for the card. The overflow menu is how Epicor refers to the three dots in the upper right, and will have different options available depending on which menu item you are using. Epicor Kinetic has a whole new look for data collection. You will change the properties of your shortcut for kinetic data collection to include a slash APP equals MES at the end of the target line. Enter the employee ID and tab to have the rest of the page as shown to show what the employee is working on at this point. On the left is the classic start production activity screen, and on the right, is the kinetic version. In general, you will notice many, mainly a changed look and feel and some items may be in different places on the screen. But in the end, it's quite easy to find the main key fields that you need to fill in to start production activity. Here we can see the job assembly and operation on the old classic version and job assembly and operation in the kinetic version. And then you would click OK button to start the activity. Notice the tabs at the top of the kinetic screen to move between starting production, setup, rework, and indirect activity. Similar to start activity, here you can see the classic end activity on the left and the new kinetic interface on the right. Again, the main key features that you need to fill in are likely easy to find. Fill in the quantities and reasons, and then um, use the slider buttons in the new interface to mark the operation complete, request to move, or print non-conformance. And then click OK when you're done. My screenshot just doesn't show the OK button, but you'll see that when we open that in Epicor Kinetic. Here you can see the classic view of job tracker on the left, where you see one job number at a time. Then on the right is the kinetic view, where what Epicor refers to as a landing page, as it will show multiple jobs, basically a list view. From any landing page, you can select a row and click the hyperlink to open the details about that key field, in this case, the job. I'll demo, demo that when we open Job Tracker later in Kinetic 
Capricorn. And the last screen we'll be looking at here on the presentation is the work queue. And on the left, again, you can see the classic work queue showing current job operations that can be started. And on the right is the similar list in Kinetic. However, the Kinetic list will not be automatically populated. You'll need to use the search option for the resource group to search with the sort by resource group and starting at the resource group that you want to view. Notice in the classic view, you have five tabs, the active, current, available work, expected work, and job details. In the kinetic view, you have the same five tabs. And if you select a job to start the activity before you click the button to actually start activity you will see the selected pieces and the selected production hours shown at the top near the start activity button so now we'll take a look a little more closer look and in-depth look at these items in kinetic And you can see the status bar at the top there telling you it's still working on things. There we go. So here we can see what Charles L. Johnson has in his queue. And if we scroll down, we can see more of the screen um, that there's other buttons available in the data collection of Kinetic. If we go into the start activity, we mentioned that we can choose production, setup, rework, or indirect here. And we can search for a job pretty much similar to how it was in the classic view. You have all the different um, drop down buttons to look at. And you can sort by, you know, the part number, job number, start date or due date, start at a certain job, list the job types that you want to pick, a job status if you want to choose that, job planner, project ID and contract. I'll usually pick the job status to pick a released job because you can't work on a, release, a job that's not released. And then you'll get your list. So you can select any of them in the list that you want to choose to start activity on. Again, you have the drop downs for your assembly and for your operation. And you can you may get a warning message if you haven't done a certain step or if you're going to skip past the steps. And notice you also have the overrides button here and the job details button here. You can click the overrides button in order to change the resource group or operation. I'm not going to change that, but that's what you have available to you. And if you click the job details, you'll see all the information about your job here. This is the main area. And then you have your operation details, job comments, if there are any, any assembly operation comments or operation instructions. And then you can close that. So once you're happy that you have selected the correct job that you want to start activity on, you can click OK. And then you'll see that one now is also showing up that Charles Johnson is working on this particular job. So similarly, the end activity, you will select the job just like you did in the old system and then click the end activity to have it fill in that job and assembly and operation. And then um, you fill in the 
current quantity, scrap quantity, and non-conformance quantity as needed. And as you fill them in, other options will become available. See the print tags button came up after we filled in the quantity. And if you fill in scrap quantity, you get the print scrap tags, and you have to search for a reason. And then you could also print the tags and print the scrap tags. And once again, once you're happy with this, you can um, click OK. I did notice that although it says next assembly and next operation, they both are always zeros. So I'm not sure if that's a glitch in the new Epicor or if it's just in the certain jobs that I'm picking. You can also use the slider button, as I mentioned, to say that this is complete if you want. I'm going to probably say it's not complete because I don't know what the quantity is. And you may get a warning if you want to continue for efficiency. OK, the job tracker is, is much more changed than it would have been on the old classic view. So down here we have the job tracker. And as I mentioned, that'll come up with a landing page, which will have all the different um, jobs there. And if you go to one of the jobs, you can see there's a hyperlink in the job number. So if you wanted to actually get the details about it, you can click that hyperlink and you can see the different details. Notice there's tabs about the job. So the activity tab shows many of the tabs that were under the details about the operations or materials or assemblies showing the transactions basically or the activities. So you can see, you know, your um, shipments, different transactions for subcontractors, material transactions here, labor transactions under act, act, operation activity. And if you click on any of them, that'll bring up the cards that are under them. And if you expand them, you can see if there's any um, labor transactions already on that operation, for example. The details tab shows the main job de details and then the um, other options that you would have seen in the classic view in the lower half with the demand summary, make the stock, make the order, make the job, and cold parts. Um, so you can see if, if it's a make to order, what's in there. Looks like this one is a make to order and it has you know, the order number line and release. And then the assemblies tab shows the tree that's similar to what, most similar to what you see in the classic view of job tracker and each item in the tree will reveal different cards on the right hand side based on and related to the item you selected in the tree and you can see that you can look at the assemblies within the job and see the information on the assembly you can look at the operations and again you can see um, the different operations and the different symbols for each operation I think this will be a stamp yeah, subcontract operation with that symbol. And you can see all the information regarding the run quantity, et cetera. And then you can also look at the materials and see information on the materials. 
and what the required quantity is, cost, et cetera. Under the operations, you can see the resources also. And the last screen that we'll look at again is the work queue. So I'll go ahead and close this screen and then look at the work queue. So I mentioned in the presentation that um, this is not automatically populated. So you will have to either customize it if you want it to automatically populate or um, search for popped up there. Okay, here we go. So now we can see all the different um, current activity, if there's any active, expected, available. And then if you select the row, you can see this is 2310. You can see the job details on that particular row. So we can look at the overflow. We didn't do that on the other screens, but you can see that there's different options available to you to change your layout, tracing, solution tracking, developer mode, change the user, et cetera. And they will be different on each different screen. Okay. So those are the basic screens that I was planning to show. I'm gonna check if we have any chat questions and then also where is the security for data collection access controlled? I expect that it is similar to how it used to be, but I have not personally checked that. So I will get back to John on that question. Thank you for your time today. I hope you found some information helpful.